Let's also bring in uh, the former Chief Statistician of India, Professor T.C. Anand, and he joins us on the show to help us understand this. Uh, Mr. Anand, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, firstly, uh, what have you made of the difference between the old series and the new series? Uh, the government is claiming that this fixes a lot of the flaws of the earlier system. Firstly, were there flaws and does the new system fix them? See, the <coughs> when we had released the new series data, we had pointed out all the major changes we had made in the new series vis-a-vis -vis the old series. And at that time, we had pointed out that the new methods of computation uh, had corrected a number of, uh, if you like, errors, flaws, which had been present in the earlier computation. Specifically, there are three major changes which are important to highlight. The first, of course, is one which everybody focuses on, which is the use of the MCA database vis-a-vis -vis the earlier efforts of using Annual Survey of Industries, the RBI survey, and so on and so forth. Now, MCA is a much more comprehensive coverage of the corporate sector. It brings to light elements of the corporate sector which were earlier completely invisible. So on that viewpoint, there is no doubt that the new series has done a much better job. The only problem is MCA is simply not available in the past, particularly when you try to go beyond 2011-12, MCA data is not available for any length of time which would make backcasting feasible. So what the CSO has done right now is insofar as the past is concerned, continue to use the same mix of information which was used earlier, which is ASI, RBI surveys, etc. And to that extent, corporate estimates in the backcast are similar to the corporate estimates which existed earlier. The other two major changes which have happened are in the estimates for the informal sector and the estimates on trade, both of which are significant that, uh, in fact, uh, the, exp the explanations were given earlier when the old series was re new series was released, and the backcasting pretty much continues and uh, makes the adjustment between 2004, 5, and 11, 12 in line with what we had done at 11, 12. So, in that sense, it's completely correct. Uh, Professor Anand, good afternoon, Ira joining in as well. You know, I think yesterday they kept highlighting, and this is uh, true, uh, that the biggest change, if you look at growth rates between the old series uh, and the back data on the new series, has come in the tertiary sector. Uh, and I think a couple of things were explained that, for instance, in telecom, there is a change in the way uh, the uh, data has been computed. Instead of subscriber additions, you're taking minute uh, usage. In financial sector, you've taken out the RBI. I think that's what I broadly understood. Uh, can you explain to us why? Why there's such a divergence on uh, on the services side, sir? Well, one of the largest sources of divergence in services side is on trade. In trade, in the old series, uh, the computation used to be done in the benchmark year using a NSS survey, which was, in as it happens, last done before 2010-11 in 99. So uh, the old series, both the 99-2000 series and the 2004-05 series were simply extrapolating the estimates generated in the 99 benchmark survey of trade done by NSS using a set of indicators. And the indicators they were using was an output-based indicator uh, derived from the marketable surplus of agriculture, output of manufacturing, and output of mining. Now, the problem with such a long period of extrapolation is that that extrapolated uh, numbers had become serious overestimates, and this became revealed when we uh, did the calculation from the NSS benchmark survey of 1011. It turns out that if you use sales tax data, that level of uh, uh, overestimation would have been much less, and so the new series shifted to using an indicator derived from sales tax collection. And the back projection has also been done using the sales tax collection, which is much less volatile for c compared to that output indicator, because that output indicator was made volatile by a simple fact of including mining in it. And if you remember what had happened to mining output in the last few years before the crisis, was there was a huge explosion in commodities production. Uh, China was pretty much buying up mining output from all over the world, and Indian mining had seen a huge boom as a consequence. Uh, the global financial crisis, the shutoff from the demand from China has essentially meant that that 
growth as that as a factor of growth has ceased and more importantly using it to estimate trade gva was a serious mistake on the other two points sorry i'm just going to persist on the telecommunications and financial services sir uh, are those uh, are those change in methodologies uh, so do they sit well with you yeah see the rbi one is part of sna 2008 uh this is a global thing uh central banks are no longer being treated as market enterprises they have been shifted to non market now consequently rbi's uh, value added is not taken on the basis of surplus which it generates but on actual expenses so there's a huge change in the way central banks are uh, accounted for in national uh, in national accounts all over the world that has affected financial services in so far as telecommunication is concerned the earlier series used to use a proxy for lack of any other data on number of customers uh the customer growth was seen as a one order removed from actual value added so instead of using customer growth it was decided that we should use something which is clo- likely to be closer to value added which is minutes of usage for which data is now readily available and that change has made some change to the way uh, communications has been measured the government uh, uh, mr anand also seems to say that this this new data series is also a lot more inclusive and linked to global standards uh, would you subscribe to that view sorry can you repeat your question i, I said the government says the thing in a bit of static sure the government says that the new series is a lot more inclusive yeah. credible and linked to global standards would you subscribe to that view well it's inclusive in the sense that it is uh, it's accounting for both the informal sector is better and in general the sectoral compilation is more accurate and up to date and in so far as global standards i have already referred to the treatment of central bank and in general the estimates are much more compliant with sna 2008 in fact also sna 1993 because our method of computing gva at basic prices is in keeping with the sna recommendation so that sense what they are saying is absolutely correct uh, so you know the problem uh, comes up when you start to look not just at this data but uh, you know broaden out your view into other indicators that are already available and i think some places there does seem to be a disconnect for instance i was referring to financial services earlier uh, if you map uh, you know bank credit growth uh, and then this new series of financial services growth uh, you know in 10 11 for instance bank credit growth was at 25% uh, but the financial services sector growth was at 7 has been pegged down to i think 7 7 1/2 odd percent uh, there are other indicators such as investment rate in those years uh, Uh, which don't seem entirely consistent with the rates of uh, growth that are being suggested by this uh, back data on the on the new series uh, is that is that a is that is that a reasonable question or reasonable uh, red flag see i'll tell you one thing in so far as financial services is concerned uh the there is a difference between the way uh, data is done when full accounting data is available and the day, day, the G, G, gdp and gva is estimated when uh, in the early quarterly and advance estimates in the early quarterly and advance estimate stage the uh, gva in financial sector is linked to credit growth but once full accounting data is available uh, gva is computed on accounting data and so that disconnect will continue to be there uh, primarily in financial services the difference between 2045 and the backcasted series is on account of the treatment of the central bank and not very much else in so far as investment is concerned the story is a lot more complicated you know what has happened to investment is people are saying that the relationship between investment uh, in the backcast and the investment going forward is not the same but that's because the relationship between investment and output is not uniform across the business cycle in fact the investment cycle has a slightly different phasing compared to the output cycle typically what happens is in any business cycle investment picks up only towards the latter half of the business cycle the first half of the business cycle is usually consumption led uh, initially growth revives on the basis of consumption then investment takes up eventually the cycle runs out of steam and you are said one of the reasons why the cycle runs out of steam is because of excessive investment and excess capacity creation 
that excess allows the cycle to collapse. A new cycle starts because the excess capacity means that there is, in fact, a possibility of increasing production with a lower cost. This basic feature of the business cycle is missed by people who try to sort of say that uh, why isn't the investment rate uh, so low and why is the investment rate then so high relative to output. They're simply missing the fact that investment cycles and output cycles are on, often on a different phase. Uh, so last question uh, the, then, Professor Anand, and I don't mean to drag you into the politics of this at all, but, uh, you know, the methodology that was used in the Statistical uh, Commission's, uh, you know, draft report, uh, as it were called, uh, the government has been very dismissive of it. Uh, but these are well-known professionals who also have studied this field quite well. Uh, to what extent was the methodology used in that draft report faulty to your mind? You know, I would urge you to read their text uh, and don't put words in their mouth. <laughs> the language of that report is very careful. They say that the backcasting needs to be done. There are different ways in which backcasting can be done. Here is a way which has been done by one of our colleagues. Now, please understand that is not something which is in the nature of this is a recommended way. They want you to look at this amongst others. Now, the problem with what they have done, and that has been explained by CSO in the FAQs which they put out or something which they put out alongside it, they are basically projecting backward on current prices and then uh, splicing that and then deflating it. That is not the way to build backcasted series. The way backcasted series are done is as far as possible you do it first on uh, in, in volume terms, backcast using the uh, constant price estimates and then inflate to get your current price numbers and so on. But much more than that, the approach which they followed was a uniform splicing with an assumption that the level differences which existed in 2011-12 must be distributed over 17 years. It's a completely arbitrary exercise. And it's all right for an uh, academic research paper which is trying to build a smooth time series. And this is one way of smoothening the time series. But it is not a constructed back series. Professor Anand, we'll leave it there. Many thanks, Anit, for joining us with your perspective. That's the former Chief Statistician of India on the GDP debate.